Well, look what happens when the Chinese make grills on plastic guides. This grill is hard to take off. Well, why can't you make a grill with magnets? In addition, this grill is asymmetrical. You can't turn it over and put it back. No, he won't put it. This beveled edge, my friend, this is the bottom, but this smooth edge, this is up. And only in this way, you can put it in place. In fact, the grill is pretty cute, built on a neat plastic grill and covered in dark blue acoustic fabric. All in all, nice grills, although they are quite difficult to remove. If you belong to that regiment of people who constantly take off and put on grills, then this acoustics will not suit you. JBL looks pretty attractive. Despite the fact that vintage notes dominate in the design, thanks to small burning bulbs, thanks to the knobs on the front panel, the acoustics, in principle, gives the impression of a sort of vintage novelty. In fact, there are only two knobs on the front panel, one to select inputs and outputs, and the second knob to turn on, turn off and adjust the volume. In addition to the fact that there are lights on the front panel that signal that the speaker is turned on, there is also a small speaker, which, by the way, is a little larger than my palm. When I saw that this speaker is so small, I immediately thought, well, guys, there will definitely not be bass here. Also, here, two small phase inverter ports. Above, there is a horn emitter for Twitter. The speakers are covered with some kind of film if I'm not mistaken. The coating is of very high quality and there are no flaws to be found here. There are only three finish options for JBL. Black, brown and, in my opinion, some kind of light if I'm not mistaken. Please look in the description. The speakers do not take up much space. In fact, when you look at these speakers in the photo, they give the impression that they are huge. But in fact, they are quite compact. I would call them shelf speakers, medium size. JBL uses 25 millimeters in Twitter columns. In American terms, this is one inch. Twitter, I read the annual ring TNX diaphragm. Don't be intimidated by the name TNX, which means special, patented polyethylene. Annual ring is a compression ring to ensure that the sound wave from Twitter, which is responsible for high, partly for mid frequencies, is as clear, clear and beautiful as possible. It uses a proprietary JBL horn. If I'm not mistaken, it has a horizontal radiation of 60 degrees and a vertical radiation of 90 degrees. And thanks to the compression ring, paired with a horn, it turns out that two and a half centimeter Twitter, in principle, works in the virtual area of speaker, which is equal to the final area of horn emitter. This effect is obtained when used together, a compression ring and a horn. It is quite difficult to make such a horn that will give high quality sound. That is why such manufacturers as Klipsch, Magnet, JBL patent their products. Because when designing tweeter horns, computer modeling doesn't really work. And a good, high quality sound can only be achieved through physical experiments. Imagine how many experiments JBL had to do in order to get a cool quality horn. I don't imagine. The mid base is only 13 centimeters in diameter, slightly larger than my palm. Made from pure pulp, it is ringed for increased rigidity. Naturally, the mid-bass is black, as you can see for yourself. The suspension is rubber, by the way, quite soft. But at the same time, it's not hard. The dynamics are pretty big. From such small speakers, I always expect there to be a lack of bass. But I'll tell you about how bass these JBLs are a little later when I talk about the sound. These active speakers have some pretty interesting rear panels. Each column is different. Interestingly, you need to plug both the right and left speakers into the outlet because each speaker contains two Class D amplifiers. That is, in total, four amplifiers are inserted in these speakers. RMS speaker power is 300 watts. 
300 watts per pair, that is, each speaker produces 150 watts of power. Well, not every speaker, but amplifiers in every speaker. 125 watts of RMS power is sent to the mid-woofer and 25 watts of power is sent to the tweeter. Let this high power, which is declared by the manufacturer, not please you, because RMS power means that, when the maximum power is reached, the device must work for at least 2 to 3 hours and not fail. That is, the level of distortion and the sound quality, when operating at a maximum of 300 watts for a pair of speakers, is out of the question. As a general rule, the power rating at which the device delivers the best sound quality is about one two-thirds of RMS power. That is, the nominal power of each speaker is approximately 50 to 75 watts, at which the speaker operates, giving out the highest quality sound. Of course, they can produce 300 watts of steam, this is indicated in the instructions, but at the same time, no one will guarantee you sound quality. On the back panel, we have, since the speaker is a studio, naturally there is a balanced input here for connecting any balanced source. There is a 3.5mm analog jack for connecting any analog source. There's a USB-B input so you can connect these speakers to your computer, Windows or Mac, your choice, and there's also just a USB port. But, you cannot connect anything to this USB port. Because, this device does not support reading hard drives or flash drives. Also, on the rear panel, there is an Ethernet input for connecting to the Internet, and in fact, the same cable as Ethernet is used for the two speakers to communicate with each other. The speakers communicate with each other either via an Ethernet cable or via a wireless connection. There is also a button for synchronization and you can choose whether you connect them via cable or connect them wirelessly. By the way, if you connect these speakers wirelessly, one to another, then, in principle, you can use them as a multiroom. Well, unless, of course, you exceed the range indicated by the manufacturer as the maximum range for the connection. There is also a subwoofer output on the rear panel. Interestingly, the subwoofer output is automatic here. That is, when a subwoofer is connected, a filter is automatically turned on inside, which operates at a cutoff of 80 Hz. When a subwoofer is connected, the frequency of 80 Hz goes from the speakers to the subwoofers. And in principle, you get a full-fledged, active, three-way system. These speakers have built-in Chromecast, AirPlay 2 and you can safely stream music to them from your device, phone, tablet, computer, or any other that supports Chromecast. Interestingly, they support MQA decryption, and by the wire that connects them to each other, they achieve the transmission of the 24190 seconds signal. If you, for example, start up a signal without wires, synchronize the speakers without wires, then you achieve only 2496. In general, in fact, in order to get high quality sound, a 1696 signal is enough. As it is on CD. But these are studio monitors. In order to provide super high quality sound. And this device reads from your phone, source, tablet, a whole bunch of different formats. This is WAW, this is MP3. This is FLAC, this is DSD and PCM. The entire list of formats that this device reads, see the description. You can also connect to JBL speakers via Bluetooth. Bluetooth here, unfortunately, does not support aptX HD or LDAC. Therefore, in principle, this type of Bluetooth will be good for listening to audiobooks. But no more. As a rule, no matter how many experiments I did, but Bluetooth without aptX, without APX HD. This is a pretty serious decrease in the quality of music. Bluetooth, in this case, is an optional input for short-term listening to music.
There is also an optical input here, so you can also connect here via optics. Interestingly, the whole layout of this device suggests that it is made according to high-end technologies and high-end feng shui, because two power amplifiers are built into each speaker. As I said, one for the mid-bass, the second for the tweeter and there is a DAC in each column. That is, there is more than one DAC working on two channels. Each speaker has a DAC that processes the signal coming specifically to either column A or column B such solutions, in principle, are used only in very high level, very high quality technology and allow you to achieve maximum sound quality. The arrangement of all components inside the speaker system pays off very well in order to achieve maximum sound quality. Here, the problem of connections is completely eliminated. All connections are made inside the speaker system, at the factory, by the manufacturer. Who made sure that it was done with the highest quality? All components are located as close as possible to the sound emitter. This is, one might say, an almost perfect arrangement for your high, audiophile enjoyment. Loudspeaker manufacturers often get complaints from their customers that their loudspeakers don't sound good enough. As a rule, when investigating such cases, it turns out that clients connect speaker systems to some kind of amplifier, some sources, of completely incomprehensible origin, of an incomprehensible level of quality. And that is why, an active type speaker system is designed to eradicate all the shortcomings, all possible errors that a simple person, an audiophile, gets when connecting and installing, assembling his audio system. An active acoustic system is a system assembled with the highest quality criteria. Inside, in addition to the DAC, Class D amplifiers, and other details, there is a chipboard processor that makes digital music as good as it is in principle possible today. In the kit, in addition to two power wires and wiring for connecting speakers, a remote control is supplied. With this remote, you can turn the volume up, down, switch between tracks, and select the source. And you can press the mute button, if you really need it. In fact, how many devices I had on which it was possible to press the mute button, but I, it seems to me, never used it. I don't really know what it's for. If I need to turn off the music or make it quieter, I just adjust the volume, or press stop. The console is plastic, well made. Absolutely, not, a Chinese product with a rounded tail. Painted with silver paint. In general, it makes a very elegant and pleasant impression. In my opinion, the remote is a little discordant with the vintage design of JBL. Probably, such a black, plastic remote with square buttons with some kind of vintage opening lid for some secret functions would be more suitable here. Also, I was pleased that the guys from JBL put self-adhesive rubber feet in the kit, which, of course, need to be glued under the speakers in order not to scratch the furniture and in order to get rid of the extra resonances that arise when playing music. Buddy, you can listen to these JBLs in Riga, in the audio equipment salon at Elizabeth's 31. Today, I listen to these JBLs with different genres of music, as usual, I listen to instrumental music, I listen to electronic music, orchestral music and metal. What can I say about the sound buddy? Well, definitely, these JBLs impressed me firstly with their high quality and large scale bass. Despite the fact that the speaker here is only 13 centimeters in diameter, these JBLs give out much more bass than you would expect from them at first glance. Interestingly, there is no tightness in the bass, no tension. This is a clean, good, massive, quality bass. Bass is definitely enough to enjoy the music to the fullest. The only music on which it seemed to me that the bass was missing was, as always, AC, DC, but the fact is that AC, DC, like other metal bands, record with compressed bass and compressed mids, with compressed highs. Because, in metal, in heavy metal, 
The amount of information that musicians reproduce is so huge that most loudspeakers are unable to reproduce it. Therefore, I would say that a subwoofer for listening to ACDC would not hurt here. But for listening to instrumental music, for listening to blues, electronics, listening to pop music, there is definitely no need for a subwoofer. Bass here, just enough. But besides the basses, there are many other interesting things in the sound, which I want to tell you about. Firstly, acoustics plays very volume. Its sound, in my opinion, in terms of listening experience is comparable to the sound of a vintage Yamaha P2200 amplifier, was like this, 40 years ago among the Japanese. By the way, the legendary amplifier, the sound of acoustics, by its nature, reminded me of the Yamaha P2200. Interestingly, a very high quality rendering of the scene behind the acoustics. The sound is completely untied from the speakers. And the depth pan is very realistic. You hear and see the space between apparent sound sources, which in itself is a sign of high quality sound reproduction. All the musicians that you hear, that you see in your imagination, are located at different distances from you. The sound of JBL, in its tone, is absolutely even. There is no increase in intensity in the middle or at high frequencies. Generally, the mids and trebles sound more intense than natural on many hi-fi components. Because the brighter and richer the technique sounds, the faster, as a rule, buyers buy these components. JBL's sound is more like fast, crisp, clear, distinct, and more inclined towards neutrality than embellishment. Despite the fact that the size of the speakers is quite modest, they sound quite large. Although, of course, a subwoofer, in fact, probably still does not hurt. I listened to them without a subwoofer. But still, by drawing the stage, by the stage space that these JBL draws, I would say that these are amazing acoustics in their price range, because for the money they cost, you get a full-fledged, professional musical combine, which copes with all modern formats and at the same time draws an absolutely audiophile neutral musical picture. Guys, it's really great that you took only speakers and you no longer have to suffer to get a good sound. Look for rhodium connectors, look for gold-plated wires, come up with some kind of silver interconnects or put equipment on some kind of spikes, thorns. Although, in fact, of course, you can put them on JBL spikes to improve the sound, and press down with something from above, maybe with some kind of audiophile brick. But, in fact, the layout of active acoustics, with four amps and two DACs, one DAC in one column, another DAC in another speaker, is a very good solution for obtaining high quality sound and this arrangement proves its effectiveness precisely in the sound quality that I heard when listening to acoustics. Fell in love. Also, I want to tell you that the premium hi-fi channel is developing, and in order to improve the sound quality, to improve the video quality, I need to update the equipment on which I shoot my videos. Right below the video there is a button thank you and all thank you, all donations received are sent straight to the equipment upgrade. Watch the newest video to learn everything about high quality sound. That's all, until we meet again.